intersectionality in in this way i think uh, is a is a um, is a heritage uh, we can say that intersectionality enters into conversation with both Foucault's governmentality, but at the same time uh, with decolonial scholars uh, of South, uh, South American and uh, South Asian uh, decolonial scholars. Um, so it is a, I think there are important connections to be made. Uh, so in terms of uh, uh, what um, in terms of not making intersectionality, turning it into a um, northern knowledge, it's it's it should it should be a little bit. It has been um, produced by black feminists in north in in the global north, but black feminists um, can be can be considered like a. Uh, they are, they know, their knowledge is marginalized in the global north. So um, when uh, the Sousa Santos, uh, uh, so Portuguese uh, uh, scholar, talk about southern knowledges with the theory from the south, uh, he's also thinking about people who produce knowledge in the global north, but from marginalized positions for instance, indigenous uh, studies in the global north, uh, black feminism in the global north. So uh, I think it is important when intersectionality enters uh, into the North American, North uh, uh, European um, university, it's very important to keep this knowledge rooted in the realities and struggles of uh, uh, multiple marginalized communities. If you have read our book, uh, you know that there are two main aspects uh, of intersectionality, which is uh, fundamental to understand. We do not treat intersectionality as only a theory. It's, it's a critical theory. We treat it both as a critical theory and critical praxis. And we have separated theory and praxis for organizational reasons to structure the book. But in reality, as people who know and practice the praxis, uh, it's just they're um, imbricated. So the theory does not come from the university and then praxis uh, from the grassroots organizations and social struggles and social movements. Social movements produce their theory. And then the theories enter the university and people forget, tend to forget the, uh, the roots of the theory, and they start to treat the theory as if it is just an invention of the uh, academics. But intersectionality clearly was there in the struggles before being an academic theory. So it is for, for us, that's why our book privileges. Patricia and I pay a lot of attention of what real people engaged in real life struggles were doing with intersectionality. Even when they didn't use the word or, the, or refer to the names and the publications, etc. But then but they they did uh, intersectionality as a critical praxis because in their struggles, they were dealing with multiple forms of domination, uh, multiple forms of marginalization, and they couldn't separate those uh, issues from one another because their lives were at the center of those uh, imbricated issues. And other movements that were dealing only one kind of problem, let's say, uh, Privileged um, middle class uh, women's uh, feminism that do, doesn't pay attention to uh, class issues, right? That doesn't pay attention to racism, transphobia, anti indigenous, uh, you, you know, racism, etc. 
uh, so this feminism cannot uh, embrace represent women uh, who uh, groups of women uh, that are facing multiple forms of uh, marginalization and oppression uh, racialized class because um, um, in intersectionality is also in close uh, um, conversation with black radical tradition, right? People talking about racial capitalism in the left. I don't know if it is the case in Brazil, but in Canada and in general, in several Western societies, in France, in UK, in the United States, left uh, movements, mainstream left movements, white left movements will cri be critical of intersectionality by saying that intersectionality divides the struggle at that and then uh, intersectionality um, undermines class struggle and focuses too much on race but intersectionality does not focus too much on race intersectionality says that there is no class struggle without race race is built and baked in because the emergence of capitalism is from its invent capitalism is uh, i mean it's baked in capitalism racialized because capitalism has been built through colonialism and through slavery indentured labor so and industrial capitalism that didn't emerge like a, uh, like a magic uh, uh, in England without connections between England's, uh, I mean, British Empire, the imperialism is, uh, you know, the colonial, colonizing in India. Uh, that, I mean, it's a very global history. So we need to look at, uh, and we need to see intersectionality, I think, uh, globally. It's not a North American conversation. It is not a just, ju uh, I don't want to say this, just a black feminist issue, as if I was uh, minimizing black feminist issues, but it's, uh, you know, black feminists themselves also, they know how intersectionality uh, speaks globally to multiple audiences and to multiple struggles. And that's why uh, when we are uh, thinking about and talking about intersectionality glo in globally, I think we need to be very mindful not to erase how local struggles and how local knowledge producers uh, have their knowledge. We are absolutely uh, um, grateful uh, and happy to, to have our book being translated. And there's also here a Korean translation. And I'm like, oh my God, intersectionality in Korean, right? But we should be very mindful of how in Brazil, for instance, there are um, knowledges that are that precede intersectionality as a word. Like, uh, uh, you know, uh, there are uh, Black feminists, uh, uh, and uh, we, we are talking about uh, Carneiro, or, uh, we are talking about uh, Lelia Gonzalez, uh, and, uh, and, and of course there are other people, we cannot talk about everyone, and we want to, I think this book is a perfect opportunity to enter uh, into conversation with, with you, with, uh, uh, with others, and also learn from them learn from their your language your from your your auth, the authors the struggles um so uh, um i think um when we when when we think about the past pandemic covid19 uh, and the unequal devastations that covid is leaving behind um, how unequal is the uh, situation between the northern countries and southern countries, 
how unequal within the North and within the South, across class, race, uh, region, um, what COVID has, uh, has done and is continuing to doing, I think intersectionality uh, provides uh, an important tool that in a post pandemic society, and I'm not using here the post pandemic uh, as a post after the pandemic, like after, but more like a post colonial, like a more beyond, because we, we are transformed forever by this pandemic. There is not a post pandemic in terms, like after the pandemic, we can forget. No, we should be transformed forever. And when people say, turning back to the normal, returning to the normal, it's a violence. Only privileged societies and privileged classes in those societies can desire to return uh, to the normal. If we don't take the opportunity to refuse to return to the normal and make a post-pandemic world a more, a more just world, then we just learn nothing. And then like a three and a half million people die for nothing. It's just uh, unbelievable how people is, uh, is eager to return to the way things were. The way things were was mur murderous, was criminal. It rages me when I, and when I hear people say, okay, a, a kind of normalcy is coming back. We should, like, a, you know, in terms of environment, in terms of indigenous sovereignty, in terms of police um, violence against, uh, uh, you know, uh, black people against uh, marginalized communities, uh, suburbs, uh, favelas, uh, just like uh, it cannot be uh, this, this way. There is this danger of fasc fascism, right? Uh, in many countries. In France, they are really talking about Marine Le Pen becoming the next president. You know, I'm from Turkey, huh? just, you know, like uh, I don't, in many, many countries, in many, many countries, there is this real risk of uh, uh, authoritarianism and downright fascism. We need to pay really uh, serious attention to intersectional inequalities and center uh, communities that are facing multiple forms of uh, domination, marginalization, and oppression. Otherwise, our uh, struggles, our um, I think our movements are, will just fail. They will fail, and also, uh, yeah, our movements will, will fail, and they are failing. I mean, we we, we are seeing their failure when we see. How, what kind of uh, governments are, uh, you know, uh, what kind of political parties uh, are governing us, etc. So uh, we need to have to build solidarities and practice intersectional solidarity politics. Uh, and we cannot, we cannot just let feminism be uh, transphobic and uh, a leftist movement, uh, left politics being racially blind, uh, etc. And we cannot not build uh, alliances between multiple movements, indigenous movements, building alliances with black movements, black power movements, and, and so on and so forth, and uh, immigrant movements. It's very, very important that uh, uh, we find a language, a uh, common language to, to collaborate not to dismantle these movements and create a big confederation. I'm not talking about leaving uh, the political autonomy of movements. It, we need to find uh, ways of collaborating and co-struggling, co-resisting, uh, co-resistance, uh, co-resisting. Co it is necessary to look what the indigenous studies and indigenous scholars 
and millennial indigenous knowledges on these issues. And um, again, otherwise it, environmentalism will be another and is another field of colonial power and coloniality of power because uh, we don't take into account uh, uh, indigenous knowledges and their way of protecting and taking care of the environment. So it is, uh, that's why for me, intersectionality is a beginning, it's not the end. And intersectionality is an operator of multiple dialogues across the globe uh, and not a kind of uh, Bible to just, you know, to convert people, it's, it's, it's just really for entering into conversation and co-struggling, uh, co-resisting. There are much more uh, possibilities to uh, come from public education, like, but in terms of public, I mean, popular education, not public education given by the state, but organi our organizations and uh, lateral knowledge transmissions and, you know, probably also the kind of things that your institute and your conference is doing outside the university. And take care, all wishes of good health. Thank you.